quiet now, and as new as the morning. But soon at this console will be heard the voice of the first man on the moon. Or sometime later, these machines may plot the flight path for the first man to return from Mars. Future manned spaceflight missions to the moon, and perhaps the planets, will be commanded from this control room of the Mission Control Center at NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center, 22 miles southeast of Houston, Texas. Of course, before any such space mission is launched, a vast amount of work must be performed. Landing men on the moon will be the result of years and years of exhaustive research, development, manufacturing, and testing by perhaps 300,000 people in private industry and government throughout the United States. 90% of the space budget goes to private industry for such work, directed and coordinated by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. To NASA operates through an office of manned space flight in Washington, which directs the work at three principal centers. At the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, launch vehicles are developed and tested to provide the rocket thrust required for space missions both manned and unmanned. At the Kennedy Space Center, Cape Kennedy, Florida, space vehicles are given final preparation and checkout and are launched in test flights and operational missions, again both manned and unmanned. Finally, there is this manned spacecraft center near Houston, a great new national resource dedicated entirely to manned space missions. Located on 1,620 acres on the edge of Clear Lake, the site was selected and the center was built to meet the needs of manned spaceflight programs for the foreseeable future. Here there is a year-round climate for outdoor training and tests. The center also has the advantage of adjacent industrial plants and personnel. One of the nation's three largest ports and waterborne transportation facilities. And progressive educational institutions. As initially planned, there are 33 main buildings at MSC housing offices, laboratories, computer complexes, and testing facilities as well as amenities such as a dispensary, an auditorium, and a cafeteria, 
In all, a working home for more than 5,000 space workers. A single unified center where manned spacecraft and mission profiles are designed, where spacecraft and systems are tested, and from where their manufacture by private industry is contracted and monitored, where flight crews are selected and trained, and where, as we have seen, missions are commanded from liftoff to recovery. By the time this center opened in early 1964, America had come a long way in a remarkably short time in perfecting the techniques required to explore the boundless new world of outer space. From the suborbital flights of astronauts Shepard and Grissom to the Earth orbital flights of Glenn, Carpenter, Schirra, and Cooper, the scientific step-by-step -step approach of the Mercury program proved to be 100% effective. In the same logical progression, the next programs were scheduled to follow. The Gemini program, which has increased our flight capability and knowledge by placing men in space on missions lasting up to two weeks. And by teaching crew members how to maneuver spacecraft in such operations as rendezvous and docking. Then the Apollo program, applying the knowledge and experience gained in Gemini for successful manned lunar missions. Current and future programs have the advantage of the facilities and know-how developed during the Mercury program. Astronauts, scientists, engineers, contractors, administrators, in fact, most of the men and women who worked in the Mercury program are now devoting their skills and experience to the Gemini and Apollo programs. They are aided by a scientific, engineering, industrial, and governmental space capability many times as great as that which existed at the time of the first Mercury launch. At the Manned Spacecraft Center, inside the Project Management Building, the same team responsible for the success of Mercury is now hard at work managing the design, engineering, manufacturing, and testing of Gemini and Apollo hardware and providing for the safety and welfare of the crews. There is an overall director of MSC and a deputy director, complemented by officers heading up various staff functions. Established space programs, such as Gemini and Apollo, have complete project organizations, supported by other directorates. Four assistant directors are in charge of administration, flight crew operations, engineering and development, and flight operations, which includes the Mission Control Center. MSC also directs and staffs the NASA White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. Administration of the Manned Spacecraft Center is a Herculean task. Imagine a small town of 5,000 citizens. The mayor and town council are kept busy, but imagine the administrative responsibilities if all the people in the town were on the town payroll at about $50 million a year, and if their daily acts and decisions affected the operations of contractors, suppliers, laboratories, scientists, and others in every part of the United States. And what if all the buildings, offices, equipment, and supplies within the boundaries of the town are the town's property to be built, purchased, and maintained? In addition to normal duties, mail delivery, providing water and power, air conditioning, sanitation, road repair and traffic control, personnel relations, accounting functions, administration of the spacecraft center extends to special responsibilities, such as compliance with national security measures. And the nationwide economic impact of this particular small town amounts to about one and one half billion dollars a year. Of course, this amount buys quite a few things for our spacecraft programs, from dehydrated space meals weighing ounces to spacecraft modules weighing tons, from precious rubies for experimental lasers to astronaut pressure suits tailor-made for the particular space traveler. Selection and training of astronauts for current and future space missions is the responsibility of the Flight Crew Operations Directorate at the Manned Spacecraft Center. Training of astronauts must be both general and special, from familiarization with general spaceflight conditions to development of special skills which may be peculiar to specific missions. The goal is to minimize the adverse effects of such general and special conditions on the ability of the human being to perform. 
For an Apollo mission, for instance, in addition to simulations of the zero gravity condition inside the spacecraft during flight, crew members are subjected to sensations at one-sixth of the Earth's gravity, which is the amount of gravity they will find on the moon. Trainees can obtain some experience in working with tools or just walking and getting around on the moon's surface. Astronauts are also given many weeks of training to cope with such contingencies as aborted flights and parachute landings. Conditions on return to Earth may be more familiar than those in outer space, but training for survival is just as critical. On the desert, in the jungle, or in the sea. Academic courses are another area of flight crew training at the Manned Spacecraft Center. The growth rate of scientific and technological knowledge is accelerating each year, stimulated to an important degree by the space program itself. So flight trainees are given both basic education and refresher courses in a broad curriculum. Medical aspects of space flight, aerodynamics and space physics, propulsion systems, communications, computer theory and use, astronomy, since the stars must be used for guidance and navigation, especially on lunar and planetary missions. Field trips are made in connection with some courses, such as geology. One of these men may be the first man to step upon the surface of the moon. He will be able to report his own expert observations by radio to the mission control center, and he will be trained to know which samples to collect for later analysis back on Earth. Supplementing general academic courses and training, astronauts are given frequent briefings at the other spaceflight centers and at the plants of contractors on each of the programs. At MSC, they are given instruction and practice in the particular operations of specific missions, such as how to dock the Gemini spacecraft with the Agena target vehicle, how to land the lunar excursion module on the moon, or how the LEM can rendezvous and dock with the command module. Such specific operational training includes hours of simulated flights in mission trainers. Trainees solve various problems in all different phases of a particular space mission and become totally familiar with spacecraft instruments and controls. In the course of their training, the astronauts also help to develop and test various items of equipment. In their dual role as space pilots and as engineers, the training and experience of astronauts qualify them in a unique way to suggest system modifications and improvements. They are the ones, after all, whose safety and comfort are directly affected by the design of spacecraft and life support systems. This brings us to another complex area of support for our manned spaceflight programs, the Engineering and Development Directorate at MSC. An important area of engineering and development is crew systems, with test equipment and laboratories in building number seven. To qualify for selection as an astronaut, a person must possess certain physical and mental characteristics. But after his selection, unlike the spacecraft, he can't be physically redesigned. Instead, the engineers at MSC must design spacecraft, space suits, and all life support equipment for the human being, so he can take with him a livable environment for survival in the newly encountered regions of outer space. Such mobile environments do not have to contain all the comforts of life on Earth, but they must at least accommodate minimum human needs. In the airless, pressureless vacuum of space, with extremes of heat and cold, a livable environment can be provided by a portable life support system and a pressurized suit for use outside the spacecraft, and by environmental control systems in the pressurized spacecraft cabin. On extended missions, the crew must also be provided with food and water and waste disposal systems. In cooperation with medical schools and hospitals, manned spacecraft center researchers constantly conduct earthbound experiments to determine the effects of the space environment on human beings. In this study, volunteers were given strict bed rest for an extended period. Such immobilization causes changes in cardiovascular and muscle bone systems, similar to those expected from long periods of weightlessness in space. 
biomedical studies are also made of men participating in sports and other events where physical and mental stress may be comparable to the tensions of space flight. Here with MSC monitoring their performance at Daytona Beach, Florida, some of the world's top drivers strain to win the highly competitive Daytona Continental. Volunteers were instrumented to obtain recorded and telemetered data on their body temperatures, breathing, and heart action. Biochemical analyses were also made, as were studies of blood pressure and circulation before, during, and after the race. In a different series of tests, subjects were exposed to stimuli similar to a sudden warning signal by a spacecraft instrument. Human reaction times were measured, and brain wave patterns were analyzed. At the Manned Spacecraft Center is the world's largest, most versatile flight acceleration facility. Though primarily intended for human engineering studies and crew training, it is also capable of testing spacecraft systems in their entirety. This 1 20th scale model of the MSC centrifuge shows how the 50-foot radius arm can rotate a 3,000-pound payload in a 12-foot gondola at 42 revolutions per minute with rapid changes in speed at any instant. A force of 20 Gs can be generated for sustained periods and a force of 30 Gs for periods up to three minutes. Another large test facility at the Manned Spacecraft Center is the Space Simulation Laboratory. It contains two huge vacuum chambers, along with auxiliary facilities. Chamber A is the larger of the two, 120 feet high and 65 feet in diameter. Complete spacecraft up to 75 tons can be tested in environments like those of outer space and the moon's surface. Chamber B is 43 feet high with a diameter of 35 feet, large enough for the combined Apollo command and service modules. Its turntable, representing the lunar plane, will support 37 and a half tons. Chamber B is used primarily for astronaut training and for development of spacesuits and personal life support equipment. In both chambers, solar simulators can beam intense rays during a test equal to those of the sun unfiltered by Earth's protective atmosphere. The vacuum, which can be created by pumping out the air in either chamber, is close to the hard vacuum of space. Each chamber can be operated up to 30 days without interruption. This permits real-time rehearsals of Gemini and Apollo missions. Smaller facilities for the test and evaluation of flight hardware at MSC include oxygen chambers, shake test equipment, shock testers, a small centrifuge capable of testing 100 pound items to 100 G's, and an air bearing table simulating the frictionless environment of flight in space for guidance and control studies. Whether it be a vibration test of an astronaut couch or oven tests in conditions of extreme humidity and temperature, manned spacecraft specialists require the most modern tools and equipment. Engineering and test facilities at MSC represent the latest state-of-the-art in space technology. This thermochemical test area is located at a 110-acre remote site. Its laboratories and firing bays test spacecraft power systems and rocket engines, as well as electro-explosive devices, which are evaluated during and after exposure to shock, vacuum, acoustic noise, vibration, temperature, and gaseous vapors. For the investigation of spacecraft structural problems, the Structures and Materials Lab also subjects components, modules, and complete assemblies to static, acoustic, and vibration loading. The Materials Lab is also concerned with the effects on materials of very low and very high temperatures. High temperature tests, such as this arc jet test of heat shield material, are concerned with protecting Apollo spacecraft and crews from the 5,000 degree heat of re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. Before any flight hardware can be built and tested, of course, months and years are required to plan a mission and design the spacecraft and its systems. Here are some of the actual historical drawings of the Apollo command module made in the course of reaching today's operational design. 
For advanced missions, it may be possible to modify modules of the Apollo spacecraft. Advanced configurations of Apollo are under consideration which may lead to research laboratories orbiting in space for as long as five years, with supply spacecraft acting as tenders and rotating crews. While advanced missions are being studied, while spacecraft are being developed and tested and flight crews are being trained, other specialists at the Manned Spacecraft Center are getting ready and actually executing specific missions. This work is under the leadership of the Assistant Director for Flight Operations, with offices and laboratories at the Mission Control Center. The building contains duplicate mission control rooms on the second and third floors. Two such rooms are needed because of the detailed control preparations for missions, the frequency and duration of missions, and the amount of training essential to mission success training which includes the complete simulation of a future mission in one of the control rooms while the other controls a mission actually underway. During a mission, the flight director is at his console communicating with the crew on board the spacecraft and commanding the mission. For an Apollo moon mission, about 20 specialists will assist the director in the control room and another 250 technicians and administrative personnel will support mission control in adjacent rooms, such as this real-time computer complex. Man's relatively slow problem-solving capability compared to the speed and capacity of computers is well known. Yet much of the computer equipment required for rapid data handling during space missions is still too massive to be carried on board the spacecraft. So a computer-equipped command center must be located on Earth. Here are some of the computing equipment that calculates flight paths and solves other problems of space missions. The solutions are radioed to the spacecraft and automatically fed into the onboard computer and guidance system to keep them up to date. In this display area, computer-driven data displays instantly on a real-time basis reveal the spacecraft's location, velocity, and other conditions derived from tracking the spacecraft and communicating with the crew. Whether the mission be a two-man Gemini flight in which one or both of the crew members climb outside the spacecraft into outer space, or an Apollo mission in which the first man sets foot on the moon, the Mission Control Center helps assure the mission's accuracy, safety, and success. The Flight Operations Directorate also coordinates the worldwide tracking network and recovery forces deployed by the Department of Defense in cooperation with nations around the world. As in every other aspect of our country's space program, tracking and recovery facilities have been carefully planned to meet the requirements of increasingly complex missions. And so the men and women of the Manned Spacecraft Center, together with their colleagues and other government centers and private industry, continue with the same ingenuity, persistence, and care already demonstrated in the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs, working to convert the undeciphered facts of outer space into knowledge beneficial to mankind. Of all the scientific accomplishments of our age, our firm step into the new dimensions of space technology may well be the achievement for which we are most honored by posterity. This great man-made resource, the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center at Clear Lake, is an important part of that destiny.